I'm going to take you through a few of our projects. Um, and yeah, thank you. And the first of all, I'd like to show you, I'd like to be able to uh, introduce the fact that uh, since the early 90s, I, I've been working in, in, uh, in India and have uh, done some nice work there. And here is the Oberoi in, in Amar Villas uh, in Agra. <clears throat> And here I first learned the, the idea of uh, what it's like to, to design an Islamic water garden. And that was a really, really quite cool. Um, the, the point of this project is that um, I, you know, probably a lot of you have been here, but um, no matter what we could do in the gardens that were on the, on the Taj Mahal side of the, of the hotel, if we did anything there of any significance, it would have blocked the Taj Mahal. And while our work is kind of okay, it certainly cannot compare to the Taj Mahal. So I sunk the entire project into the earth, uh, something like uh, 10 meters. So we ex excavated a huge amount of soil so that we could create this, this sunken uh, swimming pool with terraces and so forth and water coming down the terraces to create, uh, to create a, a Taj Mahal of our own, if you will. <clears throat> then uh, one of the, an another project that we worked on, which has also turned out very nice, is the Leela in Udaipur. It's, um, it, uh, well, last year, it won the number one hotel in the world uh, uh, for travel and leisure well, by readers voting. Uh, so it's still, while well, we finished this some years ago, something like 10, 15 years ago, it's still looking really good and the service there is fantastic. And I learned about um, the materials that India has and how to put them together in, in a, very, um, a very traditional way, but also in a very contemporary way. Um, <clears throat> so that was great. Right next door to that, is a is a beautiful project uh, that we did with Mr. O'Broy called the Uday Villas, uh, and the interior the interior designer was Jeffrey Wilkes, and the and the architect was a fellow named um, uh, uh, Nimish Patel, uh, a beautiful great man, great architect. Uh, so we did the gardens here, we designed the gardens, and it took us something like five, five, seven years to complete this project. Uh, it was uh, uh, a, a fabulous experience, um, but a little drawn out, but a fabulous experience, and, and today it remains a classic of, of Indian hospitality. I'd like to also share with you, I'd like to share with you one of our, my personal projects. This is a, a project that I own um, and own with my um, partner, Sukun Chanprida. And he, <clears throat> this project is in, um, in Cambodia at the Cardamon National Forest. And that forest is the, one of the largest, is the largest rainforest in all of Southeast Asia. And it, it's, <clears throat> it, it's, um, it creates all of the rain that falls into the rice bowl of Thailand and Vietnam and Cambodia and Laos. So it's very important to keep it intact. But about seven years ago, this is an interesting story. About seven years ago, I was approached, or I heard about rather, a, um, a concession of the Cardamon National Forest that was for sale. In fact, it was for sale so that we could do whatever we liked with it. If we wanted to, to mine the, pla the, 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 the minerals that were in the soil, we could do that. If we wanted to destroy the entire uh, 500 hectares of land, we could do that. Um, well, not being a lumberjack, at least not in this life, I decided 
that that was perhaps not the best thing to do. So we, we uh, decided to make a, a hospitality slash conservation project. So on this piece of land, it's 500 hectares roughly, that's a little bit bigger than Central Park in New York, we placed just 15 tents. And the, one of these tents is, uh, one of these tents is just, one of these tents is just right here. Now these tents are not just normal tents, nah, these tents are super luxurious. In fact, this is the, this is the bathtub in one of the tents. And these tents are, are placed so far apart that you can certainly bathe outside and no one's ever gonna bother you. So it's, it's a very expensive to stay here, something like $2,400 a night. And, uh, but part of that, um, part of those, those fees for the overnight stay is, it's all inclusive, for part of those fees go towards uh, the, the, um, the hiring of a private army. Now you may ask me, why Mr. Bill do you have to have a private army? All around Cambodia, people ha have been poaching uh, wildlife from this, these, the national park for a long time, and it's without, without the, this private army that's been in tech since the early 90s, uh, started by a great woman um, uh, named uh, Mrs. Gauntlet. Uh, we, without that army, every, all of the animals would be gone. It would be like the forest of Vietnam, the forest of Laos now, completely dead. So it's a, it's a private army of about 115 people that, um, how to say, they uh, live by the rules and laws of Cambodia. And the laws say that you can't hunt and you can't log within these national forests. So <clears throat> once again, part of uh, the, the fees that come into our, part of the nightly fees that come into our pocket for goes towards the hiring of this. Now it's a very serious matter. In fact, this, these, um, this army that we employ has AK-47s. Why? Because the, the other side, the poachers also have guns. They are protecting the forest against pe people that are taking something like a civet cat. The civet cats and the wild animal meat um, are sold for very high prices to China and to Vietnam for the tables of the rich and famous. For one pound of civet cat meat, uh, they can uh, pick up, they can get $300, uh, $300 as where the, low, the average Cambodian, probably similar to that of India, make something like $90 a month. So this is, these are the, 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 the equipment that we have inside of our, inside of our, our, our park. And that park has these 1968 wonderful ranger vehicles, these Jeeps and such. And we also have um, trapping at night so that we know what animals are, are there. And we found that since we've been there the last uh, five, five years and so forth, and controlling more or less the trapping that goes on there, some of the animals are coming back. We're getting, we're seeing and hearing gibbons now, which is a good sign. I saw a slow loris there uh, just before COVID. Um, so that's that's great. Um, one of the wonderful ways of coming into this project is that we arrive by these these jeeps because it's very very narrow, um, very narrow a way to get into the park, and we have to climb up seven stories into a, a tower. And then we go across by zip line, 400 meters across a waterfall, and to the, and then we cross back again via zip line, and that's how you get into into Shintamani Wild. Pretty cool, eh? Um, the this the sample on the right or the picture on the right upper level. Um, we're right next to a very small village called Tumorum. And we've employed something like 75% of our employees for the Shintamani Wild are from that village. And so those people that used to hunt and trap are now becoming our rangers. And these are two of the two of the fellows. Um, throughout the, this, this, this property, it's really interesting in that we don't just 
nobody just sits in the hotel room and reads a book. Everybody gets out in kayaks. We have picnics out on the riverbed. Uh, we've got, um, we have on the lower right-hand corner is that we actually go with the rangers, this private army, out into raids. And to, just to give you an idea how serious this problem is, over the last uh, seven years, we picked up something like uh, 600 chainsaws. And a chainsaw can do a huge amount of damage. So we're getting there. <laughs> and next project I'd like to talk, talk to you about is the Capella Ubud. <clears throat> and that is a project that is, that has just won, again, the number one hotel for the second year in a row, the number one hotel, travel and leisure uh, hotel in the world. And we did everything from architecture, interiors, landscape, and I tell you an interesting story is that my client uh, uh, said to me uh, as we we're building this project, as we we're beginning this project, um, he, he said to me that he wasn't really happy with the design that was on the boards. And I was working with a local architect who had designed a 120 room hotel that uh, cascaded down this beautiful, this beautiful site. And, and it would have wiped out the entire site uh, and cost a lot of money because of retaining walls, et cetera, to do an Accor hotel. And maybe it would have been priced at $60, $70 per night. Um, so I said to myself and said to Suito, my lovely client, what if, Suito, we take a totally different approach and that is low impact, high yield. And what if we do uh, 10 can? 10, 10 temps. I love camping, so that's where it came out. And so what if we did 10 very luxurious tents, and no, 23 very luxurious tents on this particular site, uh, we save, save you a lot of money in the initial, uh, initial building, we respect the site, and uh, we also come up with something very interesting and using recycled furniture, et cetera, but we create this place which used to be, the story is it used to be the encampment or the tented camp for the, the, uh, the Dutch people that were invading uh, Bali in the 18th century. What a weird idea. So, but we did it anyways. We built it 23, 23 rooms, cost them half as much as the original, original project. Um, now he, he's sitting at the highest room rate in all of Bali, and he uh, has the number one hotel in the world. Go figure. Suito, my lovely client, is a happy camper. Uh, these are some of the, the interesting, uh, <clears throat> interesting parts about the, the project is that th this uh, on the upper left, that's the guest room. Guest room is open on four sides. And it uh, has these beautiful um, fabric ceilings and so forth. Um, the, the, next, the next picture over here, that's the ceiling on the restaurants. So the, that ceiling took us something like uh, six months in order to paint. Um, the next slide over, this is a very important discovery that I made something like, oh, something like 15 years ago. It's called the coconut hula hula skirt. And what this does, it allows you to be able to, to keep all of the trees, all of the coconuts that are on the site and allows it to pass through a deck or pass even through a house. So in, by way of this hula hula skirt, because it sheds the water uh, before, the, so the tree goes through the house, but the hula skirt sheds the water so the water doesn't leak into the house. Very important tool, and it works. It works really well. It has three layers. First is a plastic sheet. Then there's an ijuk, which is a type of fiber. And then there's an alang alang on the outside of that. So these, these three layers work together perfectly. So remember that. If you have a site where you have to build a house, then use the hula hula skirt in order to, in order to uh, make Mother Nature more important. Okay. <clears throat> this is... The, the place where I invented the hula hula 
here, and you can see just right here that uh, this is the Four Seasons in Koh Samui. Just right here is one of those one of those inventions. So this this project when we started had 864 coconuts when we started. When we finished, it had 864 coconuts as well. Uh, so we, we took care of very, very well, minimal impact, minimal intervention onto the site. But we, we uh, uh, created for Four Seasons one of their most profitable um, beach resorts. Okay, and then here's some other photographs of that. So every room has a swimming pool, et cetera. And, it's, uh, and we're constantly involved in the renovations of this project. Now, and now this is one of my uh, favorite new projects. It's called the JW Marriott in Phu Quoc. Now that's in Vietnam. 